Hello friends, how are you? Hope you're all healthy and happy. Make sure to watch until the end to catch everything clearly. Have you heard of this Douglas TBD-1 Devastator? In 1934, the US Navy issued a request for a new carrier-based torpedo plane. The Douglas Aircraft Corporation won the competition with its prototype XTBD-1. It beat out competitors such as the Great Lakes Aircraft Corporation and the Hall Aluminum Aircraft Corporation. The Douglas TBD-1 originated from a requirement initiated by the U.S. Navy Bureau of Aeronautics in early 1934 for a new carrier-based torpedo plane. The Douglas XTBD-1 prevailed over competing entries from the Great Lakes Aircraft Corporation, Hall Aluminum Aircraft Corporation, and other firms. Highly advanced at the time of production, the Douglas TBD-1 Devastator incorporated many new innovations but was outclassed and nearly obsolete by the time it saw combat. The Navy sought a modern torpedo bomber for its growing carrier fleet, especially with the commissioning of the U.S. Ranger later that year. The XTBD-1 was designed to feature numerous advancements over contemporary aircraft, making it a promising candidate. A single prototype, the XTBD-1, was produced. The aircraft was a low-wing monoplane of mostly all-metal construction, with only the elevators and rudder covered in fabric. The wings were designed to fold mechanically at mid-span, allowing for compact storage on crowded aircraft carriers. The main landing gear retracted, but the wheels remained half-exposed below the wing's lower surface. This unique feature provided an extra measure of safety, minimizing damage during potential wheels-up landings. The arresting hook, a critical feature for carrier operations, was mounted just in front of the fixed tailwheel. The aircraft was powered by a Pratt and Whitney XR1830-60 radial engine, delivering 811 horsepower. This engine drove a metal, three-bladed controllable pitch propeller, which offered improved thrust and operational reliability. The TBD-1 Fixed Forward Machine Gun, either a 30 caliber, 7.62 mm or 50 caliber 12.7 mm Browning machine gun rear defensive machine gun a single 30 caliber gun mounted on a flexible mount later upgraded to twin 30 caliber guns on some aircraft the TBD1 could carry a variety of ordnance including a Mark 13 torpedo carried semi recessed in the fuselage up to 1000 pounds of bombs mounted on wing roots and inside the fuselage. When operating as a bomber, the bombardier lay prone on the cockpit floor to use the Norden bombsite through a small glass window. The XTBD-1 prototype made its maiden flight on April 15, 1935. Testing proceeded smoothly, and within nine days of its first flight, the aircraft was handed over to the U.S. Navy for evaluation. Over the next nine months, the Navy conducted extensive service trials, including carrier trials aboard the U.S. Lexington. The engine was upgraded to a Pratt and Whitney R-1830-64 Twin Wasp, a 14-cylinder radial engine that produced 900 horsepower. The engine cowling was redesigned for improved aerodynamics. The flat canopy was replaced with a design offering better visibility. The TBD-1A a floatplane version equipped with twin floats for catapult launch from non-carrier ships. However, this variant never entered production. The Douglas TBD-1 Devastator was highly advanced when it entered service, but rapid advancements in aircraft technology during the late 1930s quickly rendered it obsolete. By the time the Devastator saw combat during World War II, particularly in the Battle of Midway in 1942, it struggled to compete against more modern Japanese aircraft, such as the Mitsubishi A6M0. The TBD-1's limited speed, lack of agility, and inadequate defensive armament made it vulnerable in combat. Despite these shortcomings, it played a pivotal role in early carrier-based aviation and laid the groundwork for future torpedo bombers like the Grumman TVF Avenger. The Devastator's innovative design and its role as a pioneer in carrier aviation ensured its place in history as a stepping stone in the evolution of naval aviation. 
With a contract signed in February 1936 for a total production of 129 aircraft, Douglas began delivery on June 25, 1937, with the 1st Squadron, VT-3, receiving them in late 1937. The U.S. Navy now had the world's most advanced torpedo bomber in inventory, firsts for the TBD-1, as the production model was designated, included being the first Navy carrier-based monoplane, the first Navy all-metal low-wing aircraft, and the first Navy aircraft with hydraulically folding wings. The wings folded at approximately the halfway point and folded up and inward towards canopy. The hydraulic system was underpowered, and on windy days, the wings needed assistance to move. The production model would have a maximum speed of 206 miles per hour and a cruising speed of 128 miles per hour. Service ceiling was 19,700 feet and range was over 400 miles. The aircraft weighed in at 6,182 pounds, empty 10,194 pounds. At maximum takeoff weight, wingspan was 50 feet, length 35 feet, and it was 15 feet tall. The U.S. Navy ordered carriers equipped with the Douglas TBD-1, including the Wasp, Enterprise, Saratoga, Hornet, Ranger, Lexington, and Yorktown. When the United States entered World War II, 100 TBD-1s were in service. In the Marshall and Gilbert Islands in 1942, the aircraft was used with good results as a bomber, attacking troop transports and lesser ships. Marcus and Wake Islands also saw successes from the TBD-1s, as well as New Guinea on March 10, 1942. In May, the TBD-1, now known as the Devastator, was used in the Battle of the Coral Sea. On May 7, TBDs from the U.S. Yorktown and U.S. Lexington, in conjunction with Douglas SBD, Dauntless dive bombers, hit and sank the Japanese carrier Shoho. The Shoho went down within 30 minutes and several hundred of her crew perished. It was the first Japanese aircraft carrier sunk during the war, and the attack cost the Americans the loss of three aircraft. The battle disrupted the Japanese plans to invade Australia. It was also at Coral Sea that issues arose with the U.S. Navy's Mark 13 torpedo. It was discovered that many did not detonate upon impact, and also some ran deeper than the set depth. The attack on a second Japanese carrier, Shokaku, had brought these issues to light when not a single hit was recorded against it. The undauntedness of carrying out a torpedo attack in a slow aircraft after losing your fighter cover and knowing your torpedoes are defective, flying at speeds below 115 miles per hour in a lengthy straight line attack, with the skies filled with enemy fighters and anti-aircraft fire, cannot be overstated. But that is exactly what happened on June 4, 1942 during the Battle of Midway. The U.S. Enterprise, U.S. Yorktown, and the U.S. Hornet launched a total of 41 devastators against the Japanese fleet. After the Battle of Midway, the Navy withdrew the remaining inventory of TBD-1s from frontline service, relegating them to other duties including training, the last one leaving Navy inventory in late 1944. The Grumman TBF Avenger was coming into service at the time of Midway and replaced the TBD-1. The once state-of-the-art torpedo aircraft was now obsolete and somewhat forgotten, being made in smaller numbers and only remembered for its poor performance at Midway. However, the aircraft did perform well prior to Midway despite its 1930s design. There are no surviving TBD-1s left above sea level, but several wrecks have been located on the ocean floor and plans have been made to raise some. A mock-up devastator built for the 2019 film Midway is on display at the U.S. and Midway Museum in San Diego, California. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy this fascinating journey through history. If there are any errors, we apologize. This story is told for entertainment and insight, just like a story on the screen, and we link here to get the news. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.